So, uh, my name is Jiao Kim. I'm from MBEBI, uh, Cambridge, UK. Uh, for your information, actually, this is not my credit number. This is my old kit, which I use to link my publications and data. So, in this uh, in this talk, I'm gonna talk about uh, first Europe. What is Europe PubMed Central? And uh, uh, some directions we we going for linked data. Actually, which one is next? Thank you. So, in uh, first, I'm going to talk about uh, first Europe and Central, then the, how we are linking literature to other resources, and especially we are using identifiers. So then, then the way we publishing mind identifiers on RDF. And for this actually, we are using a uh, web annotation data model. So I, I will talk about uh, some slides on this. And if possible, yeah, I can show some kind of uh, uh, use case we have. So first, uh, uh, Europe PMC is a literature database. We have abstracts and uh, we have full text articles. And but, but, but also we also have other resources like uh, uh, abstracts from Agricola or patents and etc. And like uh, PMC, uh, we provide a kind of restful service with which you can get all those metadata and full text. We do also do some text mining. So with the same uh, API, you can also get uh, all those text mine terms as well. And if you have ORCID ID, and you can do some search on Europe PMC, and you can link your articles you published to your own ORCID. And also, EBI provides uh, uh, clouding uh, power. So if you have some content, and if you want to run your algorithms, actually, you can apply for Embus Cloud, and you can use uh, for, I mean, running your algorithms and, and connect uh, your content to somewhere in EBI databases or Europe PMC. And also, Bruno just mentioned about BioJS, so I, I'm happy actually I don't need to mention. So we also have a, a BioJS model for literature, you can use it. And you, have, you can use RSS feed for your query. So uh, besides providing the same content uh, as PMC, actually we do a lot of uh, kind of linking literatures with other resources. So, and then we have a kind of three mechanisms. If you have your own resource and you have a URL uh, for each entry in your resource, you can use uh, so-called external links where you provide all those mappings and then we uh, upload your mappings so that uh, you can, I mean, you can see those mappings on Europe Commerce Central. And we do text mining, we mine bio entities and we also mine identifiers which are basically accession numbers. So this is a kind of automatic way of linking literatures with other resources. And finally, we, I mean, as I said, we have an ORCID claiming tool, and you can use this to link your publications or data you published. So, so this kind of uh, summary, we have 24 external links providers, we have ORCID, and nine cross-reference done by curators, and 20 database identifiers, and six named entity types done automatically. Okay, these are kind of examples. For, for example, Pavlon provide us a mapping table between PMC IDs and they are reviewed. So, for example, for given PMC ID, if there is a link, then actually we know this article has been reviewed someone in Pavlon. So this is kind of one uh, type of information you get uh, from on Europe Pomme Central website. And also, as I said, we do text mining, so like uh, so EFO is one example. So we mine EFO and we link EFO terms uh, to the literature. And for the moment, what we are really focusing on is mining accession numbers, uh, like, like PDB or Uniprot or other uh, databases. So we, we apply our accession number tagger, and once we found those mentions in full text articles, we link those uh, accession numbers between those databases and articles. So why, what, actually we started, I mean, these mining identifiers uh, for cross-linking with EBI databases, then we realized data citation is getting more important and 
and for data citation actually uh, uh, mentioning of those uh, accession numbers per database in article is one metric to measure their impact. And then, then after that, we also found out actually uh, those accession numbers very often used as a part of URI. And then this can be a really I mean, good uh, well, research for linked data. So now we are more actually quite more focusing on linked data. So we use uh, ID patterns actually from identifiers.org, Nick just, just mentioned in his slides. And then once we mine, I mean, we apply those patterns and define uh, those mentions in articles, then we produce a uh, uh, URI based on uh, identifiers.org URI scheme. So that, I mean, if you use the same URI, actually you can get some information from our uh, triple store. Uh, for, for some of you doing uh, uh, NLP, I mean, text mining. So actually ident mining identifiers is much, much easier than uh, mining named entities where you have a lot of ambiguities. But it's not that, I mean, it's not that straightforward because it's a, first you have to do ID matching and then you have to do some kind of NER for research names like uh, Uniprod or PDB. And there are some ambiguity problems like, uh, for example, PDB. Actually, for MIN is one, one, of, one of entry PDB, but it can also mean like four minutes. And also, OMIN ERC, they have uh, both 60 digit numbers. And so, for, for research names like SwissProt, I mean, somebody use, mentioned use Uniprot, SwissProt, SwissProt with uh, dash or et cetera. So, there are actually so many variations for each research names. So, you, you have to be a little bit do something uh, smarter than just to pattern matching. And this is actually the slide showing what kind of identifiers you can actually mention in uh, full text articles. And you can see kind of categories like databases, uh, digital repositories like Dryad or clinical trials, ontologies. And also, we, we also mining actually grant this uh, for European Research Council, which is a, one of the I mean, projects recently finished. And also, not only full text articles, you can also get those accession numbers over different resources like uh, articles, patents, and even in wiki page that you can see actually, uh, depending on which resource, the most frequent uh, accession type is a bit different, slightly different. So, okay, now, so we are mining uh, identifiers then we wanted to Publish on RDF. Why? Because we because this will give us more connectivity, and also we wanted to provide some provenance information, like uh, so what PMC ID, so kind of centers where uh, identifiers mentioned, and also which section of article actually those identifiers are mentioned, and also share it, and by providing URI for each annotation. So we we wanted to other people kind of using web annotation tool and actually can give some comments on that. So for that, we, uh, we, we tried with the hypothesis, and I, we, we had a kind of a test session with some people from uh, this uh, hypothesis, and actually they, could, they managed to use our output and then show uh, some kind of annotation on their tool and make other people actually uh, share and give some comments. So we had some challenge, which was, I mean, how to model our uh, data and also text mining produce a lot of data in an automatic way. So we also have a kind of scale problem. So we are using web annotation model, which is built on RDF. And that, uh, this is actually W3C working draft and looks like more and more either companies or in the uh, academic, there are more and more usages of this. And then there are many annotation body target. And target is what you are annotating, and body is about that target. And this is actually uh, a model for our mind identifier. So you have a URI for annotation. And then, then well, as provenance, so it tells you actually which article this identifier found and what it's about. So where we kind of uh, link URIs for 
all the databases. And we have a RDF, which is actually running on this uh, sparkle endpoint. So you can test, actually. So you will get, uh, given accession number, you will get a full sentence where the number mentioned. I think that's all. Okay, thank you very much.